Good morning, everyone. So it's time to hit the road once more. And today I'm cycling from Duras to a place near Skoda, which is close to the border with Montenegro. So this will be my last night in Albania. It's about a 100 kilometer cycle ride. Uh, I've researched it now and it looks to be reasonably flat for most of the way, which is uh, a good bonus. The only slight drawback is the first 10 or 15 kilometers out of Duras appear to be on a motorway, which again, it's okay to cycle on in Albania, but we'll see. Um, it's a Sunday, so I did purposefully, purposefully, if I can get my words out, mean to leave and go around Tirana on a Sunday because I'm assuming the traffic will be, uh, will be less with uh, hopefully uh, less big trucks on the road. And what else is there? That's about it really. Um, just need to get this cycling out. The destination is a campsite. Uh, after a little bit of research, apparently this is the uh, most European and professionally run campsite in Albania and it's called Camping Albania, I think. Uh, so I will show you some pictures from there as well. And that's it, time to hit the road and I will speak to you a little bit later on. Bye for now. And so with the sound of what could quite easily be 70s porn music in the background, let's talk about today's cycle ride. As I mentioned before, the dual carriageways have been built with little thought to the residents around the area. You see this guy in the middle of the road trying to cross the road. Now there probably is a bridge somewhere, it might be two kilometers one way or it might be three kilometers another, but if he wants to get from one side of the road to the other side, what's he supposed to do? Well, plays frogger with the traffic. Still, he made it, that's a good thing. Anyhow, on to the cycling. Uh, a lot of today's cycling was not particularly pleasant, there's a lot of fast moving traffic around. As you can see here, there is a bit of a shoulder to cycle on. Um, and it seemed like I had white line fever all day. I just wanted to stay on the white line or to the right of the white line. And just the traffic was going by the side of me. Um, normally it's okay, you can just kind of switch off mentally, but uh, I don't know, today the wind was against me to start off with a little bit. And to be fair, this section of dual carriageway wasn't too bad. Because uh, it was, you know, there's two lanes on one side and I've got a nice shoulder. But a little bit later on, this narrowed down to one lane and at that point, that's when it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, I am glad that I went on a, um, on a Sunday to miss the heavy traffic. Of course, there's always places to find to stop and pull over and take a break. And this is what I do reasonably reg regularly. I take a break every kind of hour or every I don't know, 20 kilometers, whatever comes first, really. Just a, just a short break, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, get some water down me, eat some food. So this is crossing a bridge section and they have barricaded the middle of the two lanes off as you can see and there's a small shoulder for me to go down on here. Uh, this wasn't too bad again, but you know, there's just the, the headwind you know, just starts putting you off. I think it was around this point I put my headphones in. Normally I don't like to cycle with headphones, but at this point I just thought, sod it, I'm just gonna listen to some Zig Zig Sputnik actually. I think I had the 30 minute remix of Shoot It Up, which you need to be in a certain mood to enjoy. Anyway, on here you can see there's almost no shoulder at all. So the shoulder on the right hand side is just dirt and there's just like, maybe that's just six inches, eight inches of to the right of the white line. So that was hard work. But then the single carriageway went on to a big dual carriageway uh, leading on towards Kosovo, Kosovo which I visited um, earlier on in the year. This had a lovely wide shoulder, so that was awesome. How do I find my way sometimes? This is a question I'm asked. Well, I've got a GPS, I've got maps, and I also use my phone. And you might notice something here. My phone's upside down. There we go, Clever Briggs. He's pressing back, it's not working. Why isn't the phone working? Ah, it's upside down. What a clown. Anyway, it's not a surprise I get lost sometimes, really, is it? I'm never really lost. It's just uh, I check my way along the way. If you're on a bike, it's better to check it if you're unsure every sort of like 10 minutes because otherwise you're gonna cycle kilometers in the wrong direction. And now for some thoughts about Albania. I think um, there's a lot of that will stick in my mind. I definitely wanna come back. I think uh, the, the rural side of it sticks out. It's green, it's beautiful. The mountains stick out. There's a lot of agriculture. And I think there's a lot of promise here as well. It'd be very interesting to see what happens in uh, 10 years time and when they become full members of the EU. So at the minute, there's some sort of partial member awaiting full membership. Um, the Euro's in like tandem with the LEC at the minute and who knows what will happen when they join the Euro. Will it end up like Greece or not? 
it remains to be seen. So I have made it to just 10 kilometers short of a place called Skoda and I've deliberately headed to a campground in a completely unpronounceable village. But if you take a look around as I swing around, I haven't seen this much grass in, well, a very long time. I've been living in Athens a year and Athens hasn't got this much grass. It's awesome. There's only two other people in the campsite. So it's 100 km a day and this is my last night in Albania now. So tomorrow I head to Montenegro. And that is about all I've got to say because it's getting late, I'm hungry and I want to shower. So I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.